This training module demonstrates how to service the caliper guide pins of the Bendix ADB-22X air disc brake. If service inspections indicate that the caliper has not been sliding easily on the guide pins, or if a guide pin cover is damaged or missing, both the long fixed caliper guide pin and the short floating caliper guide pin need to be serviced. A number of special tools are available from Bendix to help make that servicing easy and efficient. Details on servicing air disc brakes can be found in the Bendix service data sheet. The caliper guide pins may be serviced with a caliper carrier assembly installed on or removed from the axle. If the caliper carrier assembly is removed, as shown here, new fasteners must be installed and properly torqued. This procedure is detailed in the caliper carrier removal and installation training module. As always, be sure to follow your shop's safety procedures, especially when it comes to securing, lifting, and supporting the vehicle. With the caliper carrier assembly removed, Remove the brake chamber. Next, use a chisel to remove the long fixed guide pin cover. Puncture the cover in the middle as shown here. To avoid damaging the caliper, be careful not to insert the chisel too far. Then, pry the cover off. Now, remove the short floating guide pin cover. This cover should be punctured on the side as shown here. Again, avoid inserting the chisel too far. Using a 14 mm hex bit socket, remove the two caliper bolts. To avoid damaging the bolts, verify that the hex bit is fully engaged before attempting to remove the bolts. Once the caliper bolts are removed, retract both guide pins slightly and remove the caliper from the carrier. Now remove the boot retaining rings and remove the guide pins. Then use a screwdriver to pry out the inner rubber boots. Next we'll demonstrate how to replace the guide pin bushings. We'll start by identifying and assembling the tools required for removing the old bushing for the long fixed guide pin. Be sure to properly lubricate the tools as you assemble them. Using the assembled and lubricated tool, remove the bushing from the caliper as shown here. Then remove the tool and discard the old bushing. Now we'll install the new long fixed pin bushing using the tools identified here. Use the assemble tool to pull in the new bushing until the tool is flush with the casting. This will leave the bushing extended from the casting by 39 thousandths of an inch. This means the bushing is installed at the proper position. Remove the tool. Now to ensure the new bushing is properly retained in the caliper, it must be grooved. Insert the grooving tool fully and tighten it all the way to deform the bushing into the caliper groove. Next, loosen the grooving tool out by 787 thousandths of an inch. Rotate the grooving tool 60 degrees. Tighten it all the way in again and then complete the process by unthreading and removing the grooving tool. 
Now we'll demonstrate how to replace the short floating guide pin bushing, starting with removing the old bushing from the caliper. To do so, you first need to separate the locating tab from the old bushing. Using a chisel or similar tool that is narrower than the tab, place the tool at the base of the tab and tap it with a hammer. After the tab is separated from the bushing, remove the tab with a magnet. Use a clean shop cloth to remove any excess debris. Next, assemble the required tools, greasing them properly as you assemble. Tighten the assembled tool until the bushing comes out, then remove the tool. Disassemble the tool and discard the old bushing. Then verify that the bushing bore is clean by wiping it with a clean shop cloth. To install the new bushing, first align it so the tab can be engaged into the caliper groove when properly installed to its stop. Seat the bushing slightly into the caliper by using the tool shown here and a light tap with a hammer. This helps position the bushing for proper installation. Now it's time to install the bushing using the tools shown here. Insert the tool. Pull the bushing in until the tool is tight and the bushing has reached its stop. This indicates the bushing is installed at the proper position. Remove the tool and ensure the tab is correctly aligned with the slot in the caliper bore. Place a punch at the top edge of the tab and tap with a hammer until the tab is engaged well into the caliper groove. The final installation step is to verify proper bushing installation and to check for and remove any contamination from both bushing areas. Now we move on to the inner boots. The old boots were previously removed, so we'll complete the replacement by installing the new inner boots. Both inner boots are identical and the installation procedure is the same, so we will only demonstrate installing the inner boot on the long fixed guide pin side of the caliper. First, wipe each bore with a clean shop cloth, then place a new boot into the tool. As you do, make sure the boot folds lie within the tool to avoid damage when the boot is pulled in. Using a maximum torque of 70 inch pounds, pull the boot into the casting. Then remove the tool. And verify the boot is secure while visually inspecting to be sure no damage occurred during installation. Repeat the process for the other inner boot. Next, using the white grease, lubricate both guide pins and insert them into their bores. With the inner boots properly located on the guide pins, install the new boot retaining rings onto the boots with their smaller diameter towards the boot. This locks the boots into place. Now it's time to reattach the carrier to the caliper. With the caliper lying on a bench, rock the carrier into place. As you do, make sure the guide pins are properly located in their seats on the carrier. Since the caliper bolts are of different lengths, always refer to the service kit instructions. Insert the mounting bolts from the outside. Properly secure the caliper. Then to ensure proper clamp load and caliper retention, both bolts must be tightened to 133 foot-pounds and then rotated another 90 degrees. Next, install the new guide pin covers. To do so, 
The caliper bores and the new covers must be clean and dry. If not properly installed, new guide pin seals and guide pin covers can trap air in the assembly and prevent the caliper from sliding freely. Prevent this by making sure the carrier is held against the caliper so the inner boots are compressed as the new guide pin covers are installed. Fit the new guide pin covers onto the guide pin bores and then use the correct tool and a hammer to install the guide pin covers. As your final inspection, check that the caliper moves freely and easily on the new guide pins and bushings and that the inner boots are seated correctly. If not properly installed, new guide pin seals and covers can trap air in the assembly and prevent the caliper from sliding freely. You're now ready to reinstall the brake chamber and reattach the caliper carrier to the vehicle axle. Getting commercial vehicles back on the road. Helping service facilities meet the challenges of efficiency and productivity. Providing service technicians with the assurance that comes from using genuine OEM approved parts from an industry leader. And commercial drivers with the peace of mind that comes from knowing their vehicle brakes will operate as designed with safety, performance, durability, and overall value in mind. Bendix Air Disc Brakes from Bendix Spicer Foundation Brake.